Hi everyone, my name is Satria. I'm a PhD in the group of Monix Medema in Wageningen University, Netherlands. And today I want to present you uh, our project charting the secondary metabolic diversity of more than 200,000 microbial genomes and metagenome assembled genomes. In our group, we study biosynthetic gene cluster. So those are microbial genomic features of which genes that encode for proteins that in turn act as enzymes involved together in a single secondary metabolic pathways are commonly found to be clustered together or next to each other in the genome. And this makes it possible for us to design an algorithm and computational programs to basically try and mine uh, these natural products out of the genome sequences of the bacteria or fungi. And Antismes is one of these tools and uh, the way it works is that uh, it basically uh, uh, try to identify a set of uh, protein domain libraries using PHMA models that uh, were uh, found to be often commonly associated with uh, secondary metabolism or were in a, a BGC. And uh, understanding these secondary metabolites and also these PGCs are not only beneficial for natural product discovery, for example, antibiotics discovery, but also in order to uh, understand the dynamics of the microbiome. For example, in this recent study uh, that were recently published in, in Science, uh, they found several uh, BGCs that are correlated to the uh, fungal suppressiveness ability or phenotype of uh, the soil microbiome that they are currently uh, studying. So uh, if we want to study the uh, evolution and uh, function of species, one thing we can do is to group them into what we call gene cluster family or GCF. So those uh, BGC sharing similar structures may also predict it to share similar function or produce uh, similar metabolic compounds. And uh, one way to do that is uh, using a tool that we previously built called Bigscape. So uh, what Bigscape does is uh, for each pair of BGC, first we perform a uh, PHMM uh, scan on uh, bigenetic PVAM domains and we measure the number of shared uh, PVAM domains between the two BGCs and then we also measure for each uh, same PVAM domain between the two BGC we uh, align the protein sequence and measure their sequence similarity and also we take into account the gene synteny of uh, the two BGCs and uh, these three variables together will form the similarity matrix uh, between the pair of BGCs. And then we perform uh, for all the BGCs that we have as an input, uh, we perform all to all pairwise comparison and build a network or graph, uh, and then use them to perform uh, a gene cluster family calling or uh, clustering. So uh, as you can see here on this uh, example study, where they use Bigscape to um, call the gene cluster families and also try to link them with known compounds. Uh, so in this project, we want to take things a little bit further. So uh, we want to take all the sequenced microbial genomes out there in uh, the databases and also in some uh, metagenome assembled genomes and uh, come up with a total of 200,000 uh, genomes and predict the BGCs using Antismes from them and come up with uh, around 1.2 million BGCs. And you can imagine that we can do a global scale uh, homology analysis to try and basically build a map of uh, biosynthetic diversity or potential biosynthetic diversity across all the organism that we have sequenced. And uh, you can see the details of the results of this uh, project on my poster presentation. Uh, and in this presentation, I want to uh, focus on the technical details of the tools that made this kind of analysis possible. 
So a problem with the Bscape approach uh, is that although it's pretty sensitive to capture the slightest difference between BGCs, with the L to all pairwise comparison approach that it uses, uh, you can imagine that it will not be scalable enough to the scale of global analysis uh, of 1.2 million BGCs that we want to perform uh, in this project. So we need to come up with different strategy and what we end up with is uh, an approach of which we uh, convert each BGC into numerical feature matrix. And the reason of doing this is that we can then uh, use uh, different clustering algorithms that scales uh, in linear or even sublinear fashion, like k-means, or in our case, we use the Beard's clustering algorithm, which basically is a greedy-like approach, and where you can speed up the uh, clustering with an, a three-best index. Now, this approach dramatically improve the runtime of our global scale analysis. Here you see that uh, using our 36 core CPU server, we managed to perform this GCF analysis in roughly uh, one week runtime. Where... So we store everything in uh, SQLite database. So it's a file-based uh, uh, database structure. And this gives us the ability to perform complex queries while being portable enough so that we can just move it around in a single file. Uh, so we store this uh, together with a mini web app based on uh, Python Flask. And this basically uh, enable users to uh, just do uh, uh, one line, uh, command line to run the server and then the users will immediately uh, have access to this uh, dynamic and feature-rich user interface that they can use to uh, explore their uh, clustering results in their own uh, personal computer. But one feature that uh, you can already use and uh, will be uh, uh, pretty uh, useful is the query of uh, putative BGCs. So you can imagine that uh, if we take uh, the results of the 1.2 million uh, BGC clustering analysis uh, here in this project, you can then use it to uh, quickly do a search or uh, the replication of your newly sequenced BGCs. Uh, so that's all from me. Uh, I will be happy to take your questions.